This video is about how my brother and I built our metal hoop house or high tunnel greenhouse. This greenhouse has been standing for over five years now and it's still going strong and this was pretty simple to construct and it doesn't require a ton of material. I'll have a material list and other information in the description so let's get right into it. Starting off with the foundation, it's 2x6 cedar boards anchored with 2x2 two two cedars and the frame is 12 by 19 feet. And the nice thing about this greenhouse style is that the dimensions are easily customizable. You can remove a pole or add a couple more to make it whatever size you're looking for. The poles themselves are anchored with rebar that's driven into the ground and the rebar works really well with the baseboards because they keep everything from pushing out and it gives you a place to attach the plastic when you're at that stage. Next up is bending the poles. This is probably the trickiest part of the entire build. And if you're interested in a more in-depth tutorial on how to bend the poles, I have a link to a video in the description, so check that out. But the way Nate did it is he bought this pole bender from Bootstrap Farmer, and this is the 12 foot option. And he measured up nine inches on each end of the pole. And we did this to make sure that we have a flat end on each side of the hoop. So it'll sit in the rebar and there will be a flat section on top. So you can run a board across each of the hoops to connect them all. One thing you want to be careful of when you're bending these poles is not to over bend them. So you just want to make sure that they're flush to the pole bender and not to pull too far beyond that because that'll end up kinking everything. And we ruined a couple poles that way. So hopefully you can learn from our mistakes and not have to learn yourself the hard way. So once you have your foundation in place and the poles bent, the next thing you have to do is make some hoops. This is one of the simpler steps. All you have to do is slide them over the rebar, connect them in the middle, and put a screw in to secure them. These things are pretty sturdy and you can hang on them if you want to test them. So once all the hoops are put together and in place, we ran a one by four treated board on top of everything. This connects them all and holds them in place. Now that all the hoops are in place, the next thing you wanna do is start framing out the doors and the windows. And there's a couple different ways to do this. The way my brother did it is he attached these boards to the hoop and framed out a window and door that way. And a couple years later, when I rebuilt this, I did it in a little bit different way. I made a hole in the middle of the board, cut it in half to create an area for the hoop to sit in. And I framed out a window using this style and this has worked really well, but there's a lot of different ways you can do it. If we were building this today, we would probably have some sort of two by four ridge beam and ridge beam support but this thing's lasted through a few winters now, so it doesn't seem like that would be a necessity. After you have the structure built, it's time to attach the plastic. We attached C channels to both sides of the front and back hoop and use wiggle wire to secure the plastic that way. And we use boards to secure the plastic on the bottom along the baseboard. You also don't wanna to forget to run some UV tape on the outside of the metal hoops that you have to protect your plastic. My brother and I used different approaches to attaching the plastic, and after seeing how both of them worked out, I would recommend going with his approach, which is using a separate sheet of plastic for each end and for going over top of all the hoops. And once you have everything in place, you can go ahead and secure them using the wiggle wire. We used wiggle wire to secure the plastic to the ends of the hoops, and we used some thin cuts of lumber to secure the plastic to the baseboards. So this is how I put a new sheet of plastic on a couple years later and instead of doing individual sections, I put one giant sheet over the whole thing and secured it that way. So I would recommend cutting plastics for each end of the greenhouse and then putting a sheet over top as opposed to just using one sheet of plastic for the entire structure. So these are the ends of the greenhouse when you use my approach, which is one giant sheet, as compared to the ends of his approach, which is using individual plastic sheets. And as you can see, it's a lot cleaner and there's not a lot of ripples and crevices, which just fill with bugs over the years. 
So after that's all done, the last thing you have to figure out is ventilation. We had our window and doors open, but that wasn't nearly enough for this greenhouse, especially in the summer. So we cut a two foot opening on each side of the greenhouse and rolled up the plastic and then we roll it back down when winter hits. This seemed to work pretty well for us. Another option is you can put a fan in there and run an extension cord out, but there's a lot of ways to do it. So you just have to figure out what's best for you and your situation. So hopefully you enjoyed this quick walkthrough on how we put this hoop house together. Pretty simple design, very scalable, and it's pretty big, relatively speaking, for the amount of time and effort that goes into constructing this. I'll put a link to our other greenhouse builds on the screen right now and the comparison between all of our greenhouse styles. So if you're interested, check those out, and I'm going to be coming out with a lot more greenhouse content this upcoming year.